Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Christopher Stelton here today, and he is a medium, and he also has um, a podcast on our web series. He's doing, um, he's part of our podcast community. He has his own podcast, and he has a series of podcasts that he's been doing. He'll be on the show various times, and he's coming on the show to do more podcasts, and today he's going to talk about heaven luck and earth luck, and he was going to really go deep and delve into the spiritual world and, and educate you on lots of things that you could utilize and apply to your own life to help you gain more spiritual access and be able to grow in your own spiritual world. So Christopher, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do and, and tell us a little about spiritual spiritual uh, luck and, hev and heaven luck. Awesome. So hi, I'm Christopher Stilton. I am a renowned psychic medium. I'm a transformational leader. I am an international best-selling author, a diamond feng shui consultant, and an energy therapist. So I do numerous different things. Um, and how this all started out with me was um, I'm obviously a psychic medium, which is my favorite thing to do. And this is how it all started. Uh, I never wanted to do readings my whole life. I never wanted to connect with them. But my spirit guide, Anna, kind of pushed me into this area and I wouldn't change it for the world. I grew up psychic and never really could connect with why other people wasn't sharing the same experiences that I was. And it made it a little difficult for me because I really felt alone in that area. I really felt like, am I not okay? Is there something wrong with me? I was seeing things, hearing things, knowing things, feeling things. And it kind of got to me at a point. So when I started getting into middle school, I kind of blocked it out or at least tried to because uh, Anna's very pushy when it comes down to things. And so when I was trying to block it out, I actually started suffering from severe anxiety and panic attacks and some depression. And when I got into high school, um, I was having another panic attack. And I said, to, I said out loud, I said, I just want this anxiety to go away. And Anna said, well, if you just listen to me, I can help you. And I made an agreement with her. If she helps me, and for now I'm going to listen to her. If she can't help me, leave me the hell alone. <laughs> and here I am today doing numerous readings with hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. And I connect very strongly with their loved ones and spirit guides. And um, uh, even connecting with their soul chart to help them along this path of life. And um, like I said, I wouldn't change it for the world. I absolutely love it. And it's just something that keeps me going. I just love seeing people's lives change before my very eyes and um, just the guidance and knowledge for from my studies through uh, books and through my spirit guide and spirit itself. So that's where I'm at now. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah you talked about, you were briefly discussing before the show, you were talking about heaven luck. Now, what exactly mm -hmm. is heaven luck? So we're actually born... Um, with three types of spiritual luck okay. and there's heaven luck human luck and earth luck heaven luck is one of them which is 33.3 percent of our manifesting so when we have all three of them each one of them is 33.3 percent of our manifesting so when you work on all three you are literally changing your life um, with 99.9 percent .9 of manifesting and which i absolutely love obviously and it's just kind of allowing yourself to let you know, let go and let God type situation. Yeah. Um, with heaven luck, it's a very powerful area. So I've always connected with heaven luck. Heaven luck is your chart, your spiritual chart, and it's your destiny and your uh, purpose, life purpose in the physical world. So before coming into the physical world, you will literally write your whole life out from birth to death. Wow. And you, it, it's it, quite frankly, I can't stand talking about it more than half the time because I even get irritated going, why this? Why me? Yeah. You know, but Anna has always told me that we do this because we want to learn through experience. And the only way to learn through experience is to experience it and also our human emotions. So you will literally chart your whole life out from birth to death. And in this chart, you will pick your parents, your siblings, lovers, divorces, children, health, career, finance, and everything. Wow. Now, obviously, when you come to the free, the when you come to uh, the physical world, you have free will. I'm not saying that you have to follow everything necessary, but those charts are what our spirit guides connect with to help us along our right chosen path and learn through all the experiences. 
And when we go through these chosen paths, you can't have the bad without the good. You can't have the good without the bad. It's it's going to happen. Yeah. Sadly, we learn more through the bad than we do the good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but if you learn to focus and understand that everything that has ever happened to you is just a lesson and mm-hmm. you're learning through the experience, it makes it a lot easier. Yes. Um, and, you know, a lot of people don't know that they're just learning. So they kind of just sit there and mope and kind of say, well, life's falling apart, life's falling apart. It's really not. You're just allowing that energy to stay with you yeah. and it's going to continue. So with our heaven luck, like I said, it, it's it's our chart, it's our destiny. And we literally have to connect with every single aspect of it all. Yeah. And um, there is times too, I want to bring up that people worry about when I say this because they go, well, I didn't ask for, you know, um, this really negative thing to happen to me and you might have not wrote that in your chart per se um but there is what we call evil around us and i don't believe in demons i'm one of the psychics that don't people mm-hmm. think it's odd but with demons it's you know i've never dealt with one never seen one and i'm not gonna sit there and just try to scare everybody yeah. um you know so i don't believe in demons but i believe that truly people can be evil there's yes. evil around us because people are evil yeah um there's there's some terrible people there and i'm not saying everyone that you don't like may be evil <laughs> it just means that for example like jeffrey dahmer for what he did that's what we would count as evil you know yes. that's it's truly evil um so there is evil people out there in the world that can interfere in our charts yeah. so you know, some of the negative, like the real negative things that happen to you may not have been written directly, but people can interfere. That's the free will. There's a lot of things that can interfere. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where that comes in. Now, having luck is the 33.3% of your manifesting, like I said, and the best way to tap into that heaven luck is to connect with your, um, your information on the other side, your higher self, your soul self, connecting with your spirit guides, your loved ones, um god or the universe whatever you feel like calling um calling me higher power per se yeah um and just allowing yourself to feel things out um people tend to step back from connecting with their heaven luck because uh of two things we're all born psychic every single one of us are but what happens is by the ages of between six and eight um we start to block it out Mm -hmm. and the two reasons we start to block it out is because either we become afraid of it or society starts pushing away for us you know the the word imagination is not one of a it's not a a friendly word to any psychic because you know we there's a lot of things behind things um but uh when you start blocking out as a child and then you you don't you when you get older you're just like i don't tap anything i don't feel anything yeah and in we all do though and you've had experiences obviously we all we all have experiences where we have things of oh I knew that was going to happen or I felt like that was going to happen and that's because we all still are in tuned one of my favorite things to say is that God wouldn't just drop us down here going good luck you know (laughs) (laughs) what I always tell people is he gave you a cell phone connect with what's going on on the other side you know be guided that way connect that way and um, kind of just feel things out and mm-hmm. allow yourself to understand that you are truly guided and you have to be more aware of that. Right. And, and you could either feel it, know it, see it. It'll come in dreams sometimes. Um, symbols and signs, you know, people see butterflies all the time. It might be from a grandmother saying changes are coming or you're doing well. Um, Mm -hmm. so it's always a good sense of things to connect. And that's the heaven luck is a very powerful area because we're truly guided by our charts and what, no, you know, who, who knows us best is the other side where we come from. Mm -hmm. And I always wake up and I just go, God, I don't know what's going to happen, but whatever the hell happens, happens. Let's just let it be. Yeah. And I just feel up my gut. Whatever I'm supposed to do that day is whatever I, I, I always say, soul, take me wherever I need to be place me where I need to be, who should I help today? Um, And just kind of allowing things to happen, you know? Oh yeah, Yeah. sure. 
it, you know, a, a lot, you know, I agree with you. Like I have never come across any type of interaction with a demon, you know, but I do believe that we do have evil people on this, on this earth for whatever reason, why they turned evil. I don't know, but I think, you know, that could definitely change the trajectory of, you know, where we were headed, you know, and how, you know, and, and that's why people have trauma and, and go through things in life, you know, but I definitely, you know, I've never come across anything that was demonic, you know, in, in the spiritual world, I've never connected with any type of spiritual, um, you know, um, spirit that was demonic or a demon, but I have, you know, in earth, you do experience, you know, evil people, people that don't, you know, that are, that don't have good intentions. And I definitely, like you, you said, I agree. It can definitely change the trajectory of where you're headed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's it's sad because with with how how society is, um, we always look for the negative things. I yes. don't know, I don't know what is up with the damn world more than half the time. But <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't we have more good things in the news? Yes. Why can't we have? But that doesn't view anything. People don't view it because yeah, okay, that you know, someone saved a cat from a tree. But then they want to watch this building burn on fire. Right. You know, that's, it, that's so much more important. And I think it's okay to know about the negative things in the world. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to stay aware of those things. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean you guys have to coddle it and hold on to it. And, yeah. you know, that's where, that's where I'm a lot, I'm, a, I'm, I'm completely different than other psychics because I don't want to stick to all your negative crap in your life. We'll talk about it. Yeah. But you know, I want to talk about your loved ones. I want to hear from them. I want them to help guide you and connect with you and tell you what's going on. Yeah. Um, when it comes down to demons, um, I, my, you know, growing up, I've always heard about this word and, you know, things like that. But um, I started becoming more curious about it. And I talked to Anna, my spirit guide, and I said, Anna, are demons real? And she goes, Christopher, why do you have to worry about things crawling out of the ground to get you when there's evil around you every day? Mm -hmm. And it's the people, it's truly the people. And um, when it comes down to it, we can't let that, those, those people interfere completely with our charts. Yeah. You know, we're learning and processing things and yes, they can interfere with the free will, but in reality, we just have to kind of say, I need to move on. I need to let go. Right. You know, um, Bob Proctor, uh, who I love dearly, um, you know, sadly he passed away, I think two years ago, but, yeah. um, he once, uh, said, um, are you going to keep that story? Or are you going to rewrite it? So, you know, you have to sit there and think about it. Are you going to sit there and, you know, stew in all your negativity in your life? Or do you want to create a whole new life that's better for you? Yeah. Do you want to, you, do you want to embrace things, you know? And, I, as a psychic too, I'm not going to sit here and say my life was all rainbows and unicorns because it right. wasn't. I've, I've had my, my, you know, my cards dealt to me the wrong way sometimes. And, you know, was I had about it? No, but I don't like to sit there and stew and, you know, create my own little pity party on myself saying, yeah. you know, why isn't this working? And that's, and that's another reason to connect with your heaven luck. Because when you truly connect with your heaven luck and you're being guided differently, you feel that out going, yeah. nope, we're moving away from that now. We have to push away from that and continuing to flow down, um, down the stream of our lives and connect differently with ourselves. So I, I definitely um, think that a lot of people need to step away from negativity. I think that, you know, you try to stay off your cell phones as much as possible or um, you know, kind of step away from it. And yeah. another thing that I learned from Bob Proctor in his, like, I love to study random things all the time. And yeah. he explains how we have the power to accept and reject anything and how every situation starts off as energy. And so imagine like energy just swirling above your head, that's yeah. the situation. And when it goes into your, um, into your, uh, conscious that's where we have the power to accept or reject it and then once it goes into your subconscious and you give it emotion that's what then creates your results so mm -hmm. if there's something of negativity that you don't like reject it I don't really want to think about that or whatnot and then that yeah. will keep raising your vibration and the higher vibration you are the better you can connect with spirit too by the way you know yeah. you just have to 
when you're in these poor lower vibrations, you're not gonna be able to connect with spirit. You have to step out of that to be able to infuse yourself with knowledge from the other side and allow yourself to um, sort of speak of um, how Anna always says that whenever I get information, it's like I'm it's like I'm in a dream state. So whenever I do uh, readings and I'm channeling, the more relaxed I am, mm -hmm. the more information I'm going to get. Yeah. So high vibration and just relax and you will start to see things being guided differently. Yeah. Now, when, when you have heaven's luck, do you, is there, are there spirit guides or are there, um, or they are maybe angels or, you know, or people who have passed that are connected with you that are helping you plan your, your, um, your trajectory, you know, and your outline, you know, when you come to either if, you know, whatever your, your, if, whether it's earth or you go to another light year or whatever your plan is, you know, are there people helping you or is this something you choose by yourself? So, um, I love that question before coming into the physical world. Um, you choose your spirit guide first. Mm -hmm. So you have a spirit guide, obviously everyone has a spirit guide. And um, obviously I got Anna, which is who I chose. So you choose yeah. a spirit guide for coming, coming here. Um, just to step on the spirit guide area a little bit more, people all the time come to me and they go, Chris, is my mom my spirit guide? My grandma my spirit guide? Well, who guided you to the day your grandma or mother died? Mm -hmm. You know, someone would have had to been there. So we all have a primary spirit guide that we choose before coming to the physical world. Right. And then when your loved ones pass, they then can guide you, they can help guide you, but you will always have your primary spirit guide. Mm -hmm. So what what happened, for example, was I was over there and I, you know, my, myself kind of went, you know what, I want to go to earth and I want to learn. I want to understand a little bit more. I want to go through the human emotions. And this is my 38th life in the physical world and I'm well over it. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm over that. But when it comes down to uh, Anna's, I pretty much said, I need you to help guide me. I need you to be my spirit guide. And your spirit and spirit guides are usually trained. They're trained over there. So people, the souls that are over there that decide, hey, I want to become a spirit guide. They will go through training to be a spirit guide. Yeah. And then um, when they go through the training to be a spirit guide, you choose them. Usually what happens when you choose a spirit guide is you're going to go through some similar situations that they have been through in previous lives that they've been in. Um, so that way they understand the situation a little bit more and they go, okay, I've been through this before and I can help them understand a little bit differently. Um, so you choose your spirit guide and then, you know, you have an army of angels. So you choose a certain amount of angels that go come around you. Uh, I have, um, Anna said, I have nine around me at all times. And when I said, when she first said that, I said, am I dying? <laughs> and, she, and she goes, you are not dying, but you chose nine to be around at all times. And you can always call upon more, or you can always send some to other people for just a little bit of time to help out with situations, but you choose a certain amount to be around you. So then you have your army of angels, and then there might be some past life loved ones that have um that are still over there that you go hey i'm gonna go to earth right now i'm gonna go to the you know go to the physical world and i want you to help guide me while i'm over there please yeah. help guide me and so you do have this whole army over there and then you sit down mainly with your spirit guide um because your spirit guide will kind of enforce like hey angels can you kind of do this for me right now because they need help with that so your spirit guide is like the manager let's say that your spirit guide is like the manager and um, you sit down with your spirit guide and then you start kind of charting things out. What do you want to learn from? How do you want to learn it? Who do you want your parents to be? Why do you want these people to be your parents? Um, this, that, and the other thing. And then um, you can even pick things from past lives. So let's say, oh, I didn't do this very well from a past life. Let's put that kind of back into this life so I can relearn that differently. Yeah. So you can actually choose things from past lives as well, um, which I've always found interesting. And then pretty much after you're done writing out your chart, um, from what I heard and from my understanding in my studies is that the last thing you do is go up to God and you go, God, um, I'm ready. And I kind of want to do this. And God takes a look at everything and goes, you sure? 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always, I always joke going our stupid asses. They go, yeah, I want to do this, that, and other thing and, you know, throw in a broken leg at the age of three and blah, 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 <laughs> you know, um, you know, we just, we can't, we can't help ourselves, but we're very eager. Souls are very eager to come here. Um, not all. I will tell you, there are some souls on the other side that we call chickens that have never incarnated. Um, they don't want to incarnate at all. Yeah. Um, because it obviously is a choice. And then when God goes, okay, and then um, pretty soon you're preparing yourself and you go right into the womb and you're born. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. I know that like when I had talked to um, a Reiki who was working on me, she told me I came here at this time as a volunteer. And I was like, I think I told you this. I was like, well, why the hell would I do that? You know, like I was eight, eight light years away, she told me. And I, you know, came here as a volunteer, but I came here, she said specifically, for my my husband, you know, to to help him, and uh, you know, so it was it was kind of it was kind of um, enlightening, I guess. But in the same time, I was like, you know, uh, you know, when I, when you see Earth and you see all the difficulties and and all the things that go on, and it's like, you know, it's like, why would you want to come here, you know? But I, I was always told like to make a difference because you're here to make a difference, you know. Yeah. Do you, they actually call on the other side, they call Earth the insane asylum of all planets to incarnate on. <laughs> it is the worst one. It is the worst one. But they also say, too, that um, the souls that come here to Earth are the strongest uh, souls because oh, really? they want to learn. Yeah. I mean, who else would want to come to this hell hall? You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a lot that goes on here. A lot. And, yeah. Um, from my understanding, too, on other planets, which I'm still kind of studying into and talking to Anna about because, you know, I'm a skeptic medium. People laugh about that all the time. I don't believe in things unless I see, hear, feel, or study into it. I have to like really get to know it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a person that looks at the at, at, like movies going, oh, that must be real. You know, I have yeah. to literally look into it. Um, so with the whole other planet thing, I do believe in alien life, but um, from my understanding, there's no other wars on other planets. The mm -hmm. only planet that has war is Earth. And yeah. I that's that's one reason why it's so dramatic here because of war. Yeah. And you know, we don't we we necessarily we don't need we don't necessarily need to be having war. I believe that mm -hmm. if we would follow both the into um into uh both the emotion and intellect of everything, we yes. go, you know, hand in hand in it, it would be yeah. a lot easier with oh, everybody. Yeah. But 100%. so many people just go with the intellect and yeah. they just like full force. Yeah. And that's the problem. You know, we don't ever focus on those things. But yeah, insane asylum. So we're here, <laughs> you know. Now you're <laughs> that. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, it's, it, with heaven luck, it's just connecting, um, learning, feeling out. Um, the intuition is one of the biggest things that people tend to have. So yeah. Um, whenever you get those gut feelings about things, yeah. that's where you're connecting with spirit. That's what you're connecting with the other side. And it's kind of allowing you to feel out how it should be or what should happen in the physical world for you. So right. when you're, when you, when you're driving on the street and you get a gut feeling of, Oh, I need to turn here for some reason. It's just like a pole and yeah. you turn, well, your spirit guide might have seen an accident happening for you that you have to miss because you can't end up in the hospital right now. And you have to turn that way. Yeah. So always feeling out your gut and um, going with the flow of that is always best to do first. Um, and then, of course, there's different clairs that you can work with. So there's clear audience where you can hear things. Mm -hmm. um, there's clairsentient where you feel things, clairvoyant, which you see things, um, clear condensate, which is clear knowledge, you know things. They just randomly pop in as thoughts. Yeah. Um, and I can't ever remember the other one, but it's smell and taste. So you can smell and taste things that are around you. And everyone has those gifts and connections, but some are stronger than others. Right. Um, I always tell people it's like three doors. The first door is completely shut. You still have it, but you just block it out. You don't want to deal with it. Don't want to listen to it. Yeah. The second door is halfway cracked open where um, you're connecting with everything. You feel everything, but you second guess it so much. You're not fully allowing it yeah and then the third door is like my ass that goes you know what hey i'm gonna leave the door wide open who wants to come in come in you know let's enjoy yeah. ourselves and um i left it wide open i just i'm kind of just pulled everywhere mm -hmm. um 
but uh, when it comes down to it, um, keeping the door open and allowing yourself to connect with it is always the best. And that's the, that's another area I want to bring up too is when it comes down to why a lot of people block it out is those two things that I explained to you through um, either being afraid of it or society, but mm -hmm. connecting with the society aspect, a lot of the religion, and I don't, I don't bash on religions. I mm -hmm. believe in God firmly. I'm an agnostic Christian, which is a Christian based religion, meaning, but an agnostic meaning seeker of my own truth. Right. Um, but when it comes down to other religions, you know, you, you do you boo boo, you know, we're all, we're all believing the same thing, a higher power and a greater good, um, which is awesome. But sadly, there are religions out there that have a lot of dogma, a lot of the false information, and it scares mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And that's what I get so a little irritated with, because nobody should be scared to live their life or do certain things. I once right. heard that um, a, a family shouldn't pray together. And that really upset me because I'm like, what do you mean family shouldn't pray together? Whenever you pray, your children should go in their own room and pray. You should go in your own room and pray. But why? Because prayer is stronger when you're with more people. Yeah. You know, it, ma you know, it magnifies Manifest. all yeah. that. Yeah. And so that like kind of, that was like a stab in the gut to me going, that hurts my feelings and, you know, we whatever. But um, I believe that with religion, the dogma has created so much fear in people that they don't want to connect with the spiritual side. They don't want to connect with that heaven luck yeah. because if they do, this is going to happen or that's going to happen or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I've never dealt with any of that negative stuff that people bring in demons right. or, you know, um, portals and things like that, you know, go stop watching movies and do your research, right. you know? Exactly. And you'll start to see things differently. So, but allow yourself to connect with, with the other side, allow yourself to feel out the other side, allow yourself to really truly connect with your soul self. That's what I always tell people, because you don't want to not connect with your soul self because then you're just being human and you're, you know, overloaded, you know, yeah. with different types of things. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful thing just to kind of, breeze by when connecting with heaven luck it just allows life to be life and um i'm trying to think of a good word for it pretty much um you'll start to see more success and start to see more happiness and joy and like all things good when connecting with that heaven luck yes has yeah. there ever been a case where people have created their trajectory and then all of a sudden they're in earth and they don't exactly, you know, like what they have chosen and feel like, all right, I, this isn't working. I want to go back, you know, <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. So when it comes down to that, the chart on the other side, your destiny is what we call a contract with God. Mm -hmm. So you, you wrote it, you have to live through it. Yeah. And, you know, we can hate different aspects of our lives, but when you hate different aspects of your lives, you're pretty much just dwelling in that negativity that we talked about. We don't want to do that. You no. know, we, do, we don't need that. No. But sadly, there are people that have come here to the physical world and it's so overwhelming for what they wrote. That's where, um, you know, bless all their souls, but like that's where suicide comes in. That's where, you know, people end things early. And from my understanding on the other side is suicide is what we call the easy way out. We want to yeah. rip that contract up. We don't want to do it anymore. We don't want to deal with it. And it breaks my heart to see people like that. But sadly, from my understanding too, is three things can happen when you commit suicide. The first thing is, is you can become a ghost with unfinished business and stuck in the physical world as spirit. Yeah. Um, the second thing is you go right back in the womb to be reborn again, to relive the same life all over again. Or the third, you can cross over. Um, but when you do cross over, you're only over there for a bit. And then you have to come back and relive that same life all over again, oh, because okay. it's a contract. You have to live through that contract. And, you know, did I have my ups and downs and stuff and whatnot? Yes, I, you know, we, we all do. And that's the part that people have to learn is stop dwelling in that, you know, stop dwelling in all that negativity. That's where people become very 
heartless, so so to speak, or, you know, very negative, because they're just waiting for more to happen. They're just waiting for, you know, the other shoe to fall. But Mm -hmm. in reality, understand you you're learning through that you need to move forward because if you don't you're just gonna get stuck in this pattern and it's just gonna continue to fall downhill that's it i've I've encountered spirits that are stuck in between and they seem to be angry or they seem to be you know like they're 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 not doing good things they're more like you know let's have some fun let's put some fear into people and stuff like that yeah so with ghosts um, I feel bad for them more than half the time because ghosts are souls. Um, and uh, by 96, 90, 95, 96% of the time, they don't even know they're dead. They, they're very lost. So they don't even know they're dead. And the reason why people have all of these connections that you just spoke of, which I kind of find funny sometimes, mm-hmm. um, because uh, when you're in a, in, when you move into a home and let's say there is a ghost in there, you're moving into their home, you're moving into their property. And then they're just like, excuse me, you know, (laughs) why are you here? What is happening right now? And they try to kick you, kick you out. They want Mm -hmm. you out. So they can become aggressive or they'll move things to try to scare you. And that's another area where people bring up demons. Chris, I think there's a demon in my house. You know, there's, you know, this happening, that happening. And in reality, it's just a ghost yeah. or, you know, or it could be a spirit that just likes to play tricks because there are some spirits. The difference between a spirit and a ghost is a ghost that is someone that got stuck in the physical world, um, unfinished business, but a spirit is someone that's crossed over, but they come back and visit and ghosts or spirits can do the same thing because they're energy. So they can manipulate objects and do stuff too. Um, In my house here, I have three uh, spirits that have um, always been here and we moved into their home. Um, So I was never alone in this house. This is my childhood home. Mm -hmm. And um, when uh, I first moved in, I was sitting in the living room and I was young and all of a sudden I felt like I I was being watched. And I'm like, why am I being watched right now? And I look up because the stairs were right on that angle and I look up and there was a little boy holding onto the, the rails and staring at me. And I'm like, who are you? Yeah. And he became my dead best friend, sadly to say that. He became my dead best friend. <laughs> um, but uh, his name's Alfred. He passed away here from SIDS in the middle bedroom, sadly. Wow. Um, but he has always been here. He still always is here. He messes with my children now, which I find funny. <laughs> um when I when when the kid when the kids first moved in um because we adopted three beautiful children um there was a night where they couldn't sleep the girls and I went in I said what in the world are you guys doing up it's two o'clock in the morning and they go well the little boy won't stop tapping on our bed oh wow and I knew I, yeah and I knew exactly who it was so I go out in the hallway and you would have just died laughing if you were to be a fly on the wall. But I was in the hallway going, Alfred, Alfred, get here now. <laughs> yeah, I'm whispering. <laughs> and I see Alfred show up. I'm like, you need to leave my girls alone. Don't bother them when they're sleeping. I said, you can scare them, play with them or whatever when they're awake. But when they're trying to, be- when trying to sleep, don't bother them. <laughs> and sure enough, he hasn't bothered them since. He'll bother them during the day, but they won't, he won't bother them at nighttime. And then we have Mr. Star and Mrs. Star, who is Mary Star. Um, they are the mother and father of Alfred, um, but uh, they passed years, years later. And they love this home so much that they decided to stay here, which is completely fine by me. Yeah. Um, but Mr. and Mrs. Star, they're hilarious. Um, Mr. Star has never talked to me. Um, I thought he was angry at first, but apparently he was just a just a normal man from that generation. Um, but he would always walk past uh, because we have a bedroom on the main floor that used to be my bedroom when we first moved in. And I would leave the door open and he would pace into my room and out of my room, into my room and out of my room. I had to switch rooms because I couldn't sleep because of him. <laughs> um, so uh, he would always pace. And there's times too where um, I will see him standing um, in the, we have a glass door right here and he'll stand in that glass door area. And then we have uh, Mary Star, who I met when um, I was younger, and I I heard someone go, Christopher, Christopher, 
and I'm like, who is yelling for me? I thought it was my mom. Yeah. And I thought that she just got back from getting groceries that um, she needed my help with something. So I um, walk out my bedroom door and I close it and I turn around to go down the stairs and there Mary Starr is standing at the end of, end of the hallway. And she's like, you should clean up the house for your mother. And I go, mm, not right now. And I turned around <laughs> and went back into my room. So, you know, spirits do the, you know, the damnest things. And when my mom decided to move, well, when, mom, when my mom was building me a bedroom in the basement, so we had more space, spirit went crazy. And um, they were playing with the washer and dryer. They were turning them on and off. Oh, they wow. were flushing toilets. They were, um, they were just moving everything. And my, one of my siblings had a drum set upstairs. And when everyone was downstairs watching TV, all you would hear is tap, 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 tap on the drum. Um, and no one was up there. And then um, when my mom decided to move out of this home um, into her new home and I bought this home, they were trying to pack up. And my brother put something in the box to pack up. And then he turned around to grab something else and we turned back whatever he put in that box was in the middle of the floor. Oh, wow. And spirit didn't want them moving. Alfred was so upset that we were, that my mom was moving. He flooded the upstairs bathroom. He, he turned the sink on and my mom, I, the water was dripping from the ceiling. And my mom was like, my mom was like, I was like, mom, something's happening right now. She runs up the stairs, opens the door. Cause it's right at the top of the stairs and water just gushed down the stairs. And, I looked over and Alfred was like, <laughs> and like laughed and then vanished. Um, and that was like irritating with me. Cause I'm like, I'm buying this house and yeah. I'm not going to let you ruin it. So I literally had to call all the spirits in for a meeting and say, mm -hmm. listen, I'm buying the home. Don't ruin my house, you know, and just let it be. And you know, you'll still see everyone. Everyone will still be here to visit. You'll still see, um, yeah. you know, my siblings. So just let it go. Just breathe and let it go. Yeah. And sure enough, everything calmed down. So yeah, they're still here, honey. They're still connecting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I love being a psychic so much is because people think all the time that there's these scary things that happen because of the movies and stuff. But in reality, they're just like us, just in a different area, different vibration. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah. And that's a good thing to connect with your heaven luck is because when you connect with your heaven luck, you guys might have the same things that might happen, you know? Yeah. So what you gotta love it again. What are some ways that people can connect with their, with their heaven luck? Like what are some exercises and things that you would suggest that they could want to build a connection or even further connection to a deeper connection? Meditation is wonderful. First of all. So when you meditate, you're relaxing the mind and body. And when you do so, before going into meditation, ask yourself a question, you know, where, wh wh what do I feel like doing? I have, I have two job choices. I need to connect with one of them, yeah. you know? Um, and uh, when you go into meditation, because you're so more relaxed and your body, you know, your body's more relaxed and you're becoming more open, you'll get more answers that way. Yeah. So that's one way is meditation. Um, always ask questions. People don't understand that, but people think that just because I'm psychic, you know, I'm just going to sit there and spirits will just pop up and give me an answer. That's not how it works. I have to ask questions. So yes. when I do readings on people, I will look at them and go, how is this person's health? And the animal will give me information. Right. How is this person's career? Blah, blah, blah. So make sure you ask questions. Um, be more open-minded. Stop shutting things off. Because some people will see a, see a sign and they just go, mm, you know, that, that that's not it. Yeah. But people don't know that you can get validation. I, I tell people all the time, if you see a sign and you feel like it's a sign, most likely it's a sign. But with me being the skeptic medium that I am, yeah, I always go, okay, you sent me that sign. How about you send me something similar again, just so I know that I'm on track with it and I'll get something just like it the next time. So for yeah. example, I got, um, I, one day I was driving and I'm, I'm looking forward and I looked down for a second and the license plate said two, two, two. And in my gut, I was like, okay, that's a sign. But then I go, okay, spirit, if that's a sign, send me that number again. And sure enough, I went right into the store, got groceries, came out, looked at my receipt, two, two, two. 
<laughs> so there's always a reason and you can always ask for validation. Um, and always just kind of, uh, I always tell people to stay focused on not so much the material stuff, but in the spiritual stuff. So kind of just release like your anger, your frustration, your depression, because when you focus so much on those negative things, it lowers your vibration, which makes it so you can't connect with spirit as much. You just yeah. need to, you know, feel it out. And I'm not saying just because I'm psychic, it means that, you know, I'm happy all the damn time. There's things that happen. I get frustrated and angry just like, cause I'm human, yeah. but I don't stew in it. I just go, okay. My, my mom thinks I'm crazy because I go, I'll get mad. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm staying there just, you know, talking about everything. And then five minutes later, I'm just like, so what's for dinner? And she's like, <laughs> you were just angry. And I go, yeah, but I let it out and I released it and I don't want it back. So I'm good now. So, you know, just releasing that energy always helps as well. So you just want to make sure you're feeling out things like that. But there's other things you can do, you know, just talk to your spirit guide and, um, uh, always try to say, pay attention to, um, pay attention to how you feel about things too, because your first instinct on things are always usually an answer, yes. you know? So, um, one more thing I do want to bring up too, is that you're not going to get all your answers either. So good luck with that. Because <laughs> with me as a psychic, I don't get all my answers. I'm not allowed to get all my answers. I'm what really irritates me is I can get as much information as I possibly would need for someone during a reading. But then I look at Anna, I go, well, how is my health? And she's like, oh, you're fine. That's all I get. I don't get if I have any issues with anything or whatnot, because right. I'm supposed to learn the same way everyone else is. Mm. So it makes it, so I don't get all of it. So yeah. Um, connecting that way is always the best for your heaven luck and just staying tuned with it. Yeah. My husband always tells me he wants it, you know, since I'm psychic, he, you know, I should be picking out the six ball before the, uh, <laughs> you know, how many people have asked me, Christopher, what's the, what's the lottery numbers? Um, <laughs> and I look at them going, do you really think if I knew what the lottery numbers were, I would sit here reading you right now? <laughs> no, I would be out doing something else. You know, I'd be doing, I'd be doing readings in Jamaica or something for a little bit, you know, yeah. I wouldn't be here. Um, that's one thing too, is I would never stop doing readings. I, I fell in love with my work that, um, I want to do readings till the day I die. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I always joke, tell people I, I want to die during a reading <laughs> and then I want my client that I died in front of to go to another medium so I can apologize. <laughs> you know how awesome that would be? Um, but yeah, so, um, I don't know what the lottery numbers are, uh, boy, do I wish sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> I don't know what they are. And there was, there's another question too, that people always ask me, um, always ask me, oh, pre like who's going to win the next presidency and things like that. And, you know, sadly that involves my life anything that involves my life I can't fully see yeah. there's bits and pieces where I'll be like okay yes I can see that this person may be getting closer or will win it but yeah. you know it involves me so there's times where it's like I can't see anything like that right you know yeah I don't want to get involved with politics anyways <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah so today's supposed to be the solar eclipse so we were talking yes. earlier about um, in the spiritual world, it has to do with releasing the negative and bringing in a, a, a kind of like a renew. So can you explain to people, you know, what it means spiritually, the solar eclipse and how maybe people can benefit from it? If there's anything they can do to kind of let go of that negativity or have, you know, some type of connection where they could use that energy from the solar eclipse to actually better their lives or better their spirituality. So um, astrology, obviously, is part of the solar eclipse. That's the whole astrology thing. Um, and from my understanding is that astrology is also based off of our heaven, luck, our spiritual chart. So I'm, okay. I, I love that you're bringing that up. Because even when we're creating our charts on the other side, the astrology part comes into it. Because mm -hmm. if you've ever seen as an astrologist, they know, like, when's the best time for this for you and blah, 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 blah. It's because they're looking into that chart in a certain way that I don't. But yeah. um they're doing it differently. And um, so it always connects with something. And with solar eclipse, 
um, from my understanding of what my my friend who studied astrology and things are, is it's really good for the release, the renewal, and clearing out pretty much all that you need to, but also manifesting. So bringing in the energy that you want for your future, how to create mm -hmm. for your future. Um, I always tell people to um, kind of, you can do prayer, you can write notes about how you feel or what you want to release and then burn it and let it go. Yeah. Um, you can, uh, I like, I think I told you that, you know, right after my plan after this is to um, do a lavender shower to clean off my energy. And then um, I want to burn some sage. And then when the eclipse starts, I want to burn some um, sandalwood because sandalwood is, um, and it, it brings in new energy for you. So sandal was yeah. a really good energy for new energy. Um, so I love that. Um, there's, there's numerous things of release you can do too. One time for release, what I did is I took a glass, uh, a glass plate and I wrote all the crap that I didn't want on it anymore. And I put it in a plastic bag and I just smashed it. Mm -hmm. um outside that felt pretty good too I'm not gonna <laughs> lie that was, that was, it was a good time um but there's just numerous things that you can do to release and bring in that new energy like I said um sage is wonderful um you can also put a uh lavender colored candle in the southeast of your home okay. or whatever room you're in because with feng shui and then that's another episode we'll talk about with earth luck one day um but with feng shui uh lavender is the color of release and when you uh have it in your southeast it helps with releasing so oh, you can put wow. it in the southeast yeah you can put it you can put it in the southeast of any room you want um, whatever room you're in, I should say, but as long as it's in the southeast of it, mm -hmm. um, and then um, you can also put it in the southeast of your home altogether. So if you think of your home as like a box, yeah. what direction is the southeast? So my southeast is a thin part of my living room, and I actually have a lavender candle going right now with in the southeast of my living room. Oh, I like so. that. I like that. Yes. So when I was talking to one of my team members, they were like, I think I'm going to open my window so the energy from outside will come inside the house. Is that, will that do anything? Yes. Yeah. So you want to make sure, and I, and I actually do that even in the winter time for about 15 to 20 minutes, I'll open my windows. And the reason for this, is because you have stale energy within your home and it's not releasing anything because yeah. you have it in your home. So when you do open your windows, you're allowing stale energy to release, but you're also allowing the new energy or the new air to come in. Um, it's also best to do that at nighttime too. So if you can, if you can open your window, maybe about an hour or two, right before you go to bed and yeah. then you close it when you hop into bed, you will feel remarkable when you wake up. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That sounds really cool. And, yeah. and I, so if we had to like, take away everything that we talked about today, like, what would you like to emphasize to the listeners? Like, what would be the most important things that we've talked about that you think they would benefit the most from? I think that we should all stay open to it, obviously. We want to make sure we're open to everything. We want to make sure that we're connecting with what we can connect with and ask for help. You need to ask spirit for help or you won't receive it. Yeah. You know, you want that guidance and you want to make sure you're connecting with that heaven luck. Because like I said, it's 33.3% of your manifesting. Yeah. And it makes life a lot easier. You know, I'm right. not saying, like I said, I'm not, my life isn't rainbows and unicorns, but my life has been a lot easier saying, you know what, Anna, you're right. I'm psychic. Let me do this. And I've been doing reading since I was 16. I'm 30 now, mm -hmm. you know, so it's been years, but um, always staying open, relaxing your mind and body to get the information, um, allowing yourself to stay on top of the intuition, especially because you want to feel things out. You want to yeah. know what you're feeling on life your your intuition is your gps through life use yeah. it you know um and people are all born psychic uh you want to make sure that you're using it's, it's use it before you lose it so to speak yeah you know and it's just like a muscle how we discussed before is it's like a muscle and the more you use it the more in tuned you are and the stronger it gets wow i love it i love it that sounds amazing now where can people find your book so I have um, two books right now on Amazon. One is with Marie Diamond, Feng Shui Master. And you can find that on Amazon. It's called Global Conscious Entrepreneurs. Um, and then that's the one that became number one bestseller in eight countries, which I absolutely love. 
And then I have a workbook, which is called Taking It Back. And that's on Amazon as well. And that book is connecting with all three of your lucks that we discussed, that we talked about. So your human awesome. luck, heaven luck, and earth luck. And that workbook actually gives you information and in three different things that you can work on for each area yeah. um, to help start the process of tapping into it and transforming your life. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. Now, if people want to get in contact with you, either ask questions or sign up for a reading, where can they find you? They can find me at uh, ChristopherStilson.com. And are there any other services besides the readings that you offer right now? Or are you just doing readings? So I do readings, um, which you can do a half an hour, an hour. And that is can be in phone or over the phone, Zoom or in person. Um, and then, uh, I do transformational coaching. So it's pretty much like a higher version of life coaching. I like to say, yeah. um, so we kind of tap into your mind a little bit and help get you thinking and try to process things differently to achieve more of your goals, yeah. um, which I love. And then I do the feng shui, which is, um, your earth luck. So I, I'm a diamond feng shui consultant. So I do feng shui and then I do the energy therapy. So that is, um, a connection with Reiki or integrated energy therapy. Oh, I love it. And anybody could contact you and anybody can make an appointment. And I assume everything is probably through zoom. So anybody in the world could really contact you if they wanted to. Oh yeah. I've done readings, um, in Korea. I've done readings in uh, Texas, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles, and the list just goes on. I've done <laughs> I love it. Oh my God. This has been awesome, Christopher. I love having you on this show. I just love talking to you. I feel like I could talk to you forever. And oh, same. this episode has been amazing. I love it. And thank you so much for coming on the show today. This has been no, awesome. You're welcome, hon. And I will see you soon again. Yeah, I, I, I look forward to it. You have a great day. You too.